drumsticks. The tools we use to connect and play our beloved drums. Count the band in and let us do cool stick tricks. What pair is the right pair? And how do you know what all the different specifications mean for you? And why are there so many? To answer this question, we're going to have a look at what features make a drumstick and how these impact your playing and the sound you make from behind the kit. Let's become drumstick surgeons and decipher how you can search the endless options available and find your ideal stick. I'm going to be breaking this video down into the five sections that matter in a drumstick. These are the material, the diameter, the length, the taper, and the tip. All of these elements come together to make an instrument in and of itself and have a timeless look. We as drummers don't have any connection to our instrument other than through these, so they're key players in enabling us to achieve a certain sound, play a specific way, and really define who we are as a player. So first off, let's look at what they're made of, the material. Most sticks are made from hickory. It has an excellent balance of qualities that make for a good drumstick, like hardness, flexibility, and strength. These features have made hickory an industry-wide standard for good reason. Durability is an obvious advantage, as you don't want to be replacing them every show. But to be durable, some natural flexibility is needed under the extreme swings in velocities and dynamics. And when I say flexibility, I don't mean you can bend them. I mean when striking the drum, the stick is able to give just enough to absorb some of the shock. All this adds to the strength of the stick that produces that classic feel that us drummers haven't moved on from for decades. This doesn't mean other great choices aren't available though. You can get sticks made from other woods like oak, maple, and synthetic materials. This is the Promark Classic Attack 7A, made from Shirakashi Oak. It's a specific breed of oak that gives extreme durability and is great for heavier styles of music. These sticks are essentially like mini trees, thanks to their denser structure. It does reduce their flexibility though, so you can expect to feel slightly more shock in your wrists with this one. Don't let that put you off though, as you'll get solid rim shots and cracks from cross sticks and a much longer playing life, thanks to this rigidity. Moving on, we have these Vic Firth SD10s made from maple. Maple sticks are perfect for those looking for speed and articulation. Maple is naturally lightweight, letting you fly around the kit with ease. These are great for lighter styles of play like jazz, beginners looking for an easy doorway into the drumming world, or those looking for that lightweight feel in the hand. Maple is also used in many drum shells themselves, meaning it is highly musical. The trade-off for these though is their longevity under persistent heavy use. So this might be something to consider if you're a heavy hitter. Finally, synthetic materials like carbon fiber and others offer the ultimate in longevity. Ahead make these sticks, their 5B light rock drumsticks with an aerospace grade aluminum tubing and the top half covered with a replaceable polyurethane cover offering, quote, 50% less shock whilst lasting six to 10 times longer than wooden sticks. Synthetic sticks have been around for a while, so the technology behind them is top class. You do sacrifice the natural feel of a wooden stick though, and they are slightly more expensive too. So materials should be your starting point as it dictates your stick's durability, weight, and lifespan. Moving on, diameter. When you pick up a pair of sticks to try, you're going to notice a stick's second defining feature, the diameter. The diameter is the width of a stick and impacts the amount of contact with your hand, the weight, and the musical style it will naturally want to go to. This is also where sizing letters come into play. Here we have your absolutely legendary, gold standard and acclaimed classic of a drumstick, the Vic Firth 5A. If you're starting out, this is going to be your drumstick blueprint. 5A is the most middle of the road, go-to stick for many reasons, but one of the main reasons is the diameter. The 0.565 inch diameter is a great starting point, thanks to its feel in the hand and the weight it gives the stick. You can wrap your hand around it to a good level, and the diameter means that you'll have a great balance of feel and weight. This is an ideal size for teenagers and adults alike, thanks to its near universal applications. 
Moving smaller, 7A is one of the smallest standard diameters you're going to come across. It's super easy to grip and allows for speedy and intricate playing due to its lightness. Great for smaller hands and younger players, it is also a favourite amongst jazz drummers too due to its ability to enable intricate playing. The lightweight nature of it makes playing feel effortless too, so definitely check these out. A slight jump from our standard 5A, we get the 5B. Take your 5A and add 3 hundredths of an inch and you'll be surprised how this affects the stick. You get more weight, more surface area to grip, meaning you can play louder without much more effort. It's great for rock playing as the diameter increases the durability of the stick. So if you're a fan of rim shots and really digging into the groove, a 5B diameter is the place where you want to start. You'll find a lot of signature rock sticks are based around the 5B diameter too, so you know they're a solid choice. Finally, the largest standard size is the 2B. 2Bs are the baseball bats of the drumming world. And with a diameter of 0.63 inches, you'll definitely feel powerful and your drums might be a bit scared of you. The added diameter helps create a strong cross stick and you can really get some volume and a full body response from your drums. This diameter is a favourite of Trey Cool from Green Day. So if you like that style of playing and the amount of smack he produces, this is where you want to be. Be warned though, the band might hate you for this one if you use it in a small venue as your drums will be loud. These diameters we've discussed are the standard sizes you're going to come across. So knowing what these feel like and how they'll affect your playing is a great starting point to explore other models, like signatures, where the diameters can be anywhere in this range. So to conclude, the thicker the stick, the more hit you'll get from your drum. The thinner, the less overwhelming and more intricate your playing will be. Diameter optimizes in-hand feel, dictates the strength of the stick and helps with projection. It's all the preference of grip feel and the dexterity you're after in your playing. Length dictates power. To understand how and why length affects our drumstick, we can turn to a little bit of physics called the law of the lever. Bear with me for 50 seconds and start the timer. You have a stick with a weight on the end. The longer the stick, the heavier the weight feels. The shorter the stick, the lighter it feels. This weight on the end feels heavier the longer the distance is from the lever or balancing point. In our case with a drumstick, your fulcrum, the part where your hand balances the stick. If you have a longer stick, the force you need to put into a stroke is enhanced thanks to your fulcrum naturally being further from the tip, enabling a strong leverage to throw the front of the weight into your drum or cymbal. If you take a shorter stick, you'll feel the weight move closer to your hands. This gives us a very nimble stick with a rear weighted feel. This is due to your fulcrum being in a position naturally closer to the tip, meaning less stick to throw and therefore less power. Less power, but more speed. Going back to our 5A, 16 inches provides a centered fulcrum point that is great for achieving a natural balance and allows us to get a feel for the relationship between your hands and the response from your drums. So when looking for a new stick, definitely play with a couple of different lengths and see what works with you and your technique. The general, and I stress general, rule of thumb to remember is the shorter the stick, the more natural intricacy. The longer the stick, the more leverage you can wield to get power into your hits. Length dictates power, reachability, and leverage. To help the stick rebound, sticks utilize what's called a taper. This is the part that connects the body of the stick to the tip. Let's take a look at the three different variations that all offer different playing experiences. A short taper, like on these Promark 2Bs, feels what is referred to as front heavy. This feel is loved by players who are heavy hitters like Travis Barker. A short taper stick offers a front weighted feel that allows you to dig into a groove and help provide more power. When you strike, a short taper reduces the rebound you'll feel afterwards and therefore requires a bit more work to play super fast with but it will pay you back with love for those heavier beats and powerful grooves. On the opposite end, a long taper rebounds quicker, giving you a faster response off surfaces like cymbals, which is a go-to feature for jazz drumming. The majority of the weight you'll feel with a long taper is gonna be found in the hands and towards the rear, giving you a feel like the stick is doing half the work. Less force, but more speed. With this rebound though, some power can be lost, as the stick will naturally want to bounce away rather than dig into the drum, like with the shorter taper. 
The balance of these is to be found in the medium. Offering a balance of the front and rear weighted feel, it gives you the control to adjust your hands depending on where you're looking to feel the weight. This is a go-to for the player looking for versatility and a natural response where the effort they put in is reflected in the feel and sound they get. As you can see, the short taper has less bounce, whilst the long taper can't wait to jump off. This spectrum of taper is key in deciding the stick's reaction to your strike, as your technique might favour a Travis Barker approach, where a front-weighted stick enables you to really dig into the groove. Or you could be the type of drummer that enjoys a layback feel, like Questlove, letting the stick bounce and flow. So remember, the taper provides the balance, rebound and feel that enhances your approach behind the kit. Now we know the features that dictate to us how a stick feels in the hands and the response you can expect when using it, it's time to check out where the rubber meets the road. The shape and mass of a tip will determine the tone you'll be able to pull from your drum set. So let's take a look at the most popular styles on the market. The tip makes contact with the drum, so the larger the contact area, the bigger the sound, and I'll let you figure out the opposite. The most standard of tips is called the teardrop, seen here on our trusty 5A. This shape offers a good amount of surface area to get a full tone from your drums, and the prominent edge from a back cut gets a defined ping from rides and hi-hats. This is ideal for any style of music. This one here is an oval tip. The rounded shape offers the largest surface area and produces a full body tone from your drums. Check out Thomas Pridgen for a great example of these tips in action. These are designed for the player looking for a strong attack and a rounded oomph from their toms. On cymbals, this shape has the advantage of being thinner at the top, allowing for a change in technique to give you a different sound, where using the side can produce a washy and broad sound, or the top for a clean ping. Round tips produce clean, bright and articulate strokes that are perfect for rock. Used by rock drummers to get that classic, prominent ping from the bell of the ride, Rounded tips have plenty of attack and a very consistent tone thanks to their spherical shape. This shape means that no matter your technique, you can get the same response on each stroke. Maybe a gift, maybe a curse. It's all about the sound you're going for. Finally, barrel tips. They're known for being full, loud and punchy. With a unique shape, barrel tips have a pronounced edge, leading to a great balance between the flat and large surface area for toms and a defined angle for clarity on cymbals. These tips make for a great live stick as much as they suit a studio environment, because they allow the utmost versatility and transfer the power to the drums well, and, due to that shape, can enable subtlety too. An important point is to not forget about the material either. Wooden tips are known to be darker as it's a natural material. Nylon tips provide an added brightness that's super noticeable on cymbals and is very popular in recorder situations thanks to their consistency. This is going to be the most dramatic change in sound you're going to get from stick to stick, so there's no harm in trying out both. Listen to players you like and check out those who play the style of tip you don't to see what you think. The main thing to remember is tip equals projection and tombra. It's the part of the stick that produces a result of all your hard work from behind the kit, so don't compromise. So 
now we've gone over all the features of a drumstick, let's take a look at what we've learned and apply it to a unique model to see what we can expect when we use it. This is the Carson McLean Signature Drumstick from Promark. Made from hickory, we get a solid and classic feeling stick that will have great durability in a range of dynamics. With a diameter of 0.57 inches, it's ever so slightly larger than our mid-range 5A, meaning a very versatile hand fill and a solid cross stick, thanks to that extra little bit of weight. With a length of 16 inches and an eighth, it's ever so slightly longer than our classic 5A, giving us more reach and power to really dig into the drum and our groove. Paired with a medium taper that helps rebound that extra throw from the length, this stick is balanced and has all the elements for a consistent and natural feel. Now, this tip is not a usual tip, so let's break it down. It's a custom design, so the angle of attack is going to dictate the sound you'll produce. You can see here that when we put it on a surface, there is a large contact area. So we know this tip will get a great tone from our toms and snare before we even touch a drum set. But when we start to adjust our angle, our contact area gets smaller, meaning we'll get a defined and prominent attack and ping from our cymbals. This is just one stick out of an endless array that deviates from the standards we've seen so far. So it's important to learn and understand those fundamentals and what I call the blueprints. So when we start to delve deeper into what we like from a stick, we can move in the necessary directions and make decisions based off what we already know and the sound we're after. It's important to remember though, that it all boils down to how the stick makes you feel and how it makes you play. No matter if you play electric or acoustic, if you like it, stand by it and play it proudly. Hopefully, this video has given you a grounding and the tools to work out how to decipher the humble yet very important drumstick. No matter what brand you like or what music you play, these stick basics will help guide you to get the feel, sound and connection to your drums that you're after. I hope drumsticks aren't so much of a minefield anymore and now look more like a drummer's ultimate playground than an overwhelming cacophony of choice and deliberation. I've been Miles from Gear for Music and please like and subscribe for more content and let us know down in the comments what sticks you use and why. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.